okay so <clears throat> everything we have done the discussion but what today we are going to discuss so today we are going to discuss about the solution of the sd van how this was like design and what was the key concept before designing this sd van solution right so we understand sd van having a three, three flavors that is a software defined network having a three flavors we talk about the sd van that is for the van solution sd access for the cisco that is for the your lan solution and aci for the data center so three co major component we have and all three components having some kind of the asian solution available right now in the market and we once we understand everything you will become the sdn engineer right and you having a complete knowledge about the sd van so this is how sdn concept was like uh, design initially but if we talk about the key component of the sd van how it was drive and how it is going to help you to just serve the different different network requirement uh, can i mute uh, i can see uh, some noise all right so uh, we just started who joined just late little bit we just started right now so no need to worry we not officially covered anything so <clears throat> let's start and just start doing discussion and then we'll talk about again the feature and concept about the disadvantage and the advantage of the sdn yesterday also we have done a lot of discussion but today also we just recap that those are solutions right so probably we understand everything together so the first thing when we think about the any routers let's say suppose you having one of the router then how router handling those packets like if any packet is going to land to the router how the processing of the packet is going to be happen so uh, anyone want to contribute anyone want to like contribute how the processing is going to happen any router and switch when the packet is just going to hit any of the interface so before going to like after in the packet and before going to out what all processing is going to happen inside of the router anyone want to contribute here anyone know about the concept how it is going to happen yeah based on the routing based on the routing table you will uh -huh. uh, first the packet will be enter and we see the lookup routing lookup and uh -huh. uh, based on the destination we will forward that packet to particular uh, interface or vlan okay good good so you'll check the routing when packet is going to enter and then it is going to forward the packet based on the destination where need to be forwarded right all right thank you thank you gajan and any other want to contribute about this concept how this is going to happen anyone having any idea like when the packet is going to enter in the router not talk about the sd van just think about the router i have a router or switch if packet is going to hit then what router is going to do with those packets is it going to check something it is going to switch the packet anything okay no worry let me just explain how it is going to happen so just think about it's a very good concept let just think about these two pcs might be switch or pc are connected so just think these are the switch so let me just write here or this is the pc1 and this is the pc2 these two pc one pc having the ip address 10.10.10.10/24 10 10 10 and another pc having the ip address might be just give me one second okay so might be this pc having ip address 20.20.20.20.24 so this is the ip so when this pc wanted to talk with this pc what is going to happen one packet is going to be formed here right one packet is going to be formed so in this particular packet what is going to happen two information is going to happen in this particular packet one is going to happen with the source ip address another is going to happen with the destination ip address right so what is the source ip address when where the packet is going to be originated that is 10.10.10 .10 .10, and that destination ip address would be 20.20.20 .20. so this is your packet that we know the ip packet we call this is the ip packet which understand the ip address and we having the source and this destination we call sometime l3 packet also so this l3 or ip packet having a two major components where your source ip address and destination ip address so once this pc will might be connected with the cable with this interface 
you can see this is the one of the might be your copper connection could be the fiber connection generally when we connect the end devices should be the copper but if you having the switch in between you can use the fiber as well but we're just thinking about the copper right now so your pc will connect it with this particular interface or might be this another pc is connected with this interface so how the communication is going to happen in the legacy route legacy router uh, scenario right <clears throat> So always the PC will de des destine, uh, destine the packet based on the destination address to this particular interface. So the packet is going to punt. So this packet is going to punt on this interface, right? So the packet is going to punt on this interface. Once the packet is going to hit, punt means that is going to hit on this interface. It is going to check some kind of the routing information. So see the IO module, whatever you are seeing here, the IO module, whatever you are seeing here, that is the actual the end connections where your packet will be going to in or out so io module is input the packet output the packet this is how it is going to be happen in the io module so the <clears throat> packet is going to hit on the interface and after hitting the packet on the particular interface the further some kind of processing is going to happen and after the completing the processing the packet is finally going to out from the another interface that is a connected with the PC2. So this is the concept it is going to be happen. So now think about your this packet reach to inside of this interface, right? And once it is going to hit this interface, this IO module doesn't having a capability to know how can I reach to this destination. It just enter the packet inside of the router. Then what is going to happen? This module is going to talk with the control plane devices means the control plane module so this control plane module is nothing it is a cpu so we call it a central processing unit so this is the brain you can say the brain of the router anything we think about the brain so it is going to consult with the brain hey brain i want to go with this destination can you tell me the path can you tell me the path then brain is going to tell the path. Yes, if you want to go particular destination, you just have to go via this interface and then finally will be packet will be transmitted to this PC. But this looks simple, but how this all mechanism is going to work together, right? We just have to understand. This is a key things we have to understand. So if you talk about the brain, if you talk about the concept, then brain having the all centralized routing information. So whatever the routing you are using, so routing table, whatever you're just thinking about, you just think about the routing table. So this routing table is could be the related to OSPF, could be related to the BGP, could be related to EIGRP, could be related to the RIP, could be related to the static routing, right? Or might be other protocol if you're running anything right mpls or could be isis any other protocol you're running so it is going to check the or might be the connected route this is also one of kind of the uh, routing table we have connected route also right so these are the possible routes we have in the igp scenario or the bgp scenario and based on that they are going to, going to consult with the routing domain and after consulting with the routing domain they are going to check what is the best path and what is the best route we are learning to reach to a particular destination then how it is going to happen they are going to happen based on the various parameter might be they use the ad values to just select the best route right might be they are going to select the <clears throat> prefix length match prefix length match or might be they are going to check with the matrix so different different we having or some advanced attribute if you're running the bgp right so i'm just writing advanced attributes but just think about for time being ad value and prefix length they're just going to change check for time being and based on that prefix length or ad value whatever the best possible route we have based on that they will give the decision how to go to the next exit interface then finally your packet will get a instruction from the brain hey, you just have to go via this interface and then finally your packet will go out. But you think there is two blocks here. You think there is two blocks. One is the in blue line, another is in this blue line. And they are completely separate two blocks. 
So if IO module wanted to talk with this control pin module, they don't have direct relationship. You can see they are the completely two split brain scenario. One is the like one domain is this, another domain is this. So they cannot directly talk to each other. They cannot directly talk to each other. Then how they basically talk to each other? Give me one second. So how they are going to talk to each other? That's the key thing we just have to understand. So if we think about how they are going to take, talk to each other, we having a separate module that is known as a fabric switch. So you can see this is the fabric switch. So this is nothing. What is going to happen when you insert these cards, when you just inserting this card. So let's just suppose one card is, let me just show you the line cards, how it looks like. So if I'm going on the Google and let me just minimize this. Cisco routers, line cards. So if you see here images in line cards, so these are the line cards you can see. So you can see in the front panels, you can having some this kind of the interface in the but back panel, you can see a lot of ASICs, a lot of cheap set are available, right? So when you insert these line cards in the router, they go in the back side and attach with us some kind of the ASICs and the chip set available in the back side and they make the connections, right? So by using those connections, they can start communicating. So the switch fabric is nothing. Switch fabric is something you just think in this way. The line card, whatever your line card just inserting, based on those line card, they are going to inside this line card inserted and they are going to just attach with the back plane ASICs. And these ASICs are basically in this interconnected and this is also going to attach. So these are the, the back plane ASICs or the hardwares. They are making the bridge they are making the bridge to connect these two module together. So once anything is going to come here, once anything is going to come here from the IO module, this IO module with the help of this switch fabric, they will consult with the CPU, that is central processing unit for the checking how basically I can go with this particular destination. And then CPU is going to tell you, <coughs> boss, if you want to go with this particular destination, I have the best route available based on the routing tables, whatever I have. And again, the packet will back to the switch fabric and come to the IO module and the finally packet will go out. So it is called as the, our switch fabric. So switch fabric is nothing. It is just to making the connection between the controller and the IO module. That is an actual data plane. So this is your actual data plane module where your IO uh, means where end devices are connected and devices are connected. This is your control plane module where you can take a decision about the routing and any of the packet which you want to switch and switch fabric is just, you know, making the bridge between these two things, right? So this is how your Basically, uh, normal router is doing the routing or switching the packet, right? If you're having the similar kind of the switch and you want to do that, you can use in this way also, right? So you don't need to worry. So I hope this concept is clear to everyone, right? How the router treat the packets when the routers accept any kind of the packet before sending to the out of the interface, right? Any question anyone having or everyone clear about this concept? Because this is a very important and based on that, we understand about the next concept. Any question guys, anyone? <clears throat> it's clear, sir. We understand how to flow of the, uh, hmm. uh, IP packet from one, one IO port to another, another port, one panel to okay. another panel through the, uh, current, through the, uh, fabric switch. Means fabric uh, okay. switch work as a bridge and it's, uh, mm. uh, yeah, it communicate to two to panels. Okay, good. So let's move to next concept, right? <clears throat> if I'm going to use the same uh, scenario and I have to do the same thing, like what the same thing? I have to take a packet in SD WAN fabric, right? And I just want to switch the packet from one location to another location. 
So how it is going to happen in the SD WAN? So the concept is going to be used same. Whatever the closed box box solution we have, on basis of the closed box solution, we having a different different uh, like uh, control planes or might be the I/O modules with the switch fabric, and based on that, we just taking the decisions. So if I open this particular box and I just distribute this three plane in different different geographical location, this will become the SD WAN. This is the become the SD WAN. Just I need to open this box. Recording in progress. Uh, there is some kind of the. Let me just mute. Okay. So if I open this particular router and I split these three brains, like I can say switch fabric one place, I can move CPU another place and IO module another place, place, not in the one box. So this solution becomes the SD-WAN solution. Exactly, we are going to do the same thing what the router is doing, but the only difference is one router is just compact with the every component inside of the single box. But we just have to open the box and after opening this box, we just have to put might be the control plane I'll put somewhere in the London. IO module somewhere in the India. And to make the connection between that London to India, I'll make one road. Right? Or my the air airspace. So this is a, acting as a bridge. That is a, my switch fabric. So this is a, how it is going to happen in the SD WAN solution. So let's understand this. So if I'm going to the next SD1 architecture, so this is the SD1 architecture. Again, if you see in the SD1 architecture, we having the control pin modules, we call it as a CPU. We having again switch fabric, right? Similar, and we having the IO modules. So nothing difference is there. The same router, what was doing in the routing in the single box, same thing we are doing, nothing changed. But the architecture has been changed. Earlier, everything was in the single box. Everything was in a single box, but now everything is in this SD WAN architecture in the distributed form. So we decouple the things and we distributed, make a distributed architecture. We make the like use a decoupling of the hardwares and we make as a different, different place where we deploy the different, different things, right? So now you can see. <clears throat> In this way, in a control plane, we put all controllers who is just acting as a brain here. In the IO module, we put actual edge routers, right? Edge routers who just going to give your physical connections to your switch A, switch, or might be the users or might be the servers, whatever you connected. So if any packet, the same scenario, if I'm going to take here, Let's say, suppose earlier we having a scenario. I have just two PC. So let me just draw the same scenario. One PC is here. Another PC is here. Just think about, so let me just write here the same scenario and let's see how it is going to happen the routing. So PC one and PC two, this is two PC. Again, I have the IP address 10.10.10.10 slash 24. And this PC having the IP address 20.20.20.20 slash 24. These two PC want to communicate to each other. So again, might be this PC is connected with the edge router somewhere here or data center, or another PC is just, just connected with the, any of the remote location site. Might be these are all the edge location. You just think about the end connection, end edge location, where the different different devices might be connected with the different different locations. So we having a such scenario. So now again, we just have to build one packet. In this particular packet, we having some kind of the source address here again, this source address 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. And again, we just having the destination address 20.20.20.20. .20 now your packet is rich again from this to this location that is IO module. But this IO module, again, is a router. It could be the, your edge router. We call the V edge router. Let me just write here, V edge router. So this router doesn't having a capability to decide how to treat this particular packet. So what basically it is going to do, it is going to consult to the controller. Hey, can you tell me how basically I can reach to this destination? So controller will again reply to him 
if you want to go this particular destination, just go via this entry to this destination. So it will share the routing information, how you can reach to a destination. So controller will give the routing information about this route of this router, and then router will switch the packet to destination. So you can see earlier in single box, everything was there and router was just reaching to the controller, which is inside of the box. But here controller might be situated in somewhere. You are their office is your might be in India. Your controller could be in the Mumbai, right? So it could be the, uh, sorry, it could be the Mumbai or might be, it could be the Chennai, right? So it could be anywhere in the world, Mumbai, Chennai, UK, US, anywhere it could be. So you are reaching from Delhi to Mumbai to get the information. How can I reach to destination? And then Mumbai is just giving the instruction. And based on that, you're just switching the packet. So it's just something not looks weird, right? <laughs> not, it was not like in this scenario, it was not like in the, this router router was having the everything in build, but here something is a split scenario. So <clears throat> why basically we done, we try to understand together why we design such kind of architecture and why we have done this, right? So if we think about, right, this controller is sitting in the Mumbai and you are in the new Delhi. So what is the media? who is just helping to make the connection between these two locations and which is very fast. So it could be anything. It, this media could be the air media, right? You can go with the air media. You can go with the like, uh, you can go with the trains, right? Aeroplanes, trains, or you can go by road because we having the now very good expressway from Delhi to Mumbai, from where you can reach within the 12 hour from the Delhi to Mumbai, right? Earlier it was not possible by road, you can reach there, right? So we having a lot of options available here from the air, from the train and from the by road. But if you think about by the road, if you think about in last five year or might be uh, two year back or might be 10 year back, can I reach Mumbai by road in 12 hour? It was not possible. It was not possible why it was not possible because our infrastructure was not that much capable who can transport the cars in a very high speed from delhi to mumbai right it was not possible because our transport was not that much capable to transport high speed cars from mumbai to delhi or delhi to mumbai within the 12 hours so this was the limitations and that's why it was not going in this fast but if you think about today we build a, such a transport by using a such transport, we can transmit the cars by high speeds and we can travel within the 12 hours. So we are growing, we are increasing and that's why we having the more luxury, more facility and we are saving our lot of times and lot of monies because we having a lot of good transport, good feature available, right? So same thing was happening in the past, right? <clears throat> why, if this was the solution, then why this solution was not like introduce earlier 10 year back 20 year back why it was not possible earlier so the problem was the transport again the issue was transport the transport infra was not too good so what is the transport infra if we having the internet just take about the internet circuits so earlier 10 year back, five year back, if you think about internet circuit was not too much reliable, right? It was like unreliable. We cannot rely with the very dedicated bandwidth, dedicated speed. So that that's why if you design and develop the, you know, s driven solution, might be controllers will not able to give the right time control information to edge devices or edge will not going to reach to the controller within the right time to get the right information from the control plane devices. So this was the problem. And when we having a such kind of problem, then we were like miss some kind of the packet while doing the communication and we having some issues. So once we having the very good infrastructure, very good transport available between the, you know, all locations, then we are like able to deploy those solutions where if I'm transmitting any of the packet from edge to the controller and I'm looking for the information about the routing, it is going to deliver within the one milliseconds, two milliseconds, because it's a very high speeds circuits are available between me. 
So this switch fabric is quite capable nowadays. The internet is growing very fast, very reliable. And that's why we having the facility, if anything going to controller, controller within the limited time period of uh, connection, they are going to reply. And based on that reply, your edge is going to take a decision how to reach to destination. So this is how switch fabric is become a very powerful role between the SD WAN devices. So now you can think about the switch fabric. So switch fabric is acting as a transport, which is nothing, is just your ISPs. It could be the MPLS, it could be the broadband interface, uh, internet, it could be your 4G or 5G LTE. Whatever you think, this all <coughs> could be going with the different, different things, which could be your MPLS, which could be your internet, 4G, LTE. So by using this all concept, your packet will keep traveling from the edge location to the control plane devices. So here, earlier the router was intelligent. This router was intelligent. They having the brain inbuilt. But if you talk about the SD WAN design, technically we can say router is not intelligent. Router is not, or you can say router doesn't have brain. The brainless routers, we have a brainless routers, right? So if anything, they want to take a decision, any dis anything they want to take a decision, they just have to reach where? They just have to consult with the control plane. And once the control plane will give the instruct instructions, based on that, they will forward the packet. So this is the problem with the SD-WAN, right? But this is, this is designed based on the, our intent. We don't want to keep every router having their own brains. Why we don't want? Because just think about that. Control pin is like we having the earlier thousand router, right? These all you think about thousand routers, they all connected. The class could be right. The class is class class. Let me just mute. SD one no class. So just think about <laughs> this is the routers. We having a one router, two router, three router, four, five, six, seven, eight. Might be we can say hundred, or this goes to till thousand. So thousand router in the legacy. If you talk about the legacy van scenario, thousand router having the thousand brains, right? You all agree. So everyone is doing the analysis about the routing decisions based on individual brains. They are not going to consult any others. Whenever the packet is going to reach this router, it will take the decision by on. This will take the decision by on and so on. Everyone take the decision by on. But what is going to in SD WAN? They will just take out all the brains from the all routers. They take out all the brains from all the routers. And after taking out the brains, all the routers, they will put all brain together in this one central locations, right? So this is your thousand brains are available here. So all thousand brains are on this controller. Just think on the, this way. So now what is going to happen? These routers become the brainless because we put all the brains on the control planes. So if now any of the router want to talk any other routers, so they just want to consult with the brain. Hey brain, can you tell me how to arrange that? So now this is the concept we use in the SD WAN and why we do so? because it is going a very wider range of the visibility of the network. It is going to give a centralized management. It is going to centralize controlling. It is a going to give a centralized enforce the policies and whatever you want to control the network. You don't need to touch the individual routers one by one. Just think in, in this way, let's say suppose in your routing scenario, you having some kind of routing loops, right? you having a, some kind of routing loops. So if you're having a routing loops, you start searching and start doing the troubleshooting one by one routers, right? So might be you have to log in 10 routers to just figure out where is the issue or might be 20 routers or might be the 100 routers, depend on the situation, right? You having some kind of the routing protocol issues, any kind of troubleshooting, you just have to go and check everything by one on the routers, right? Because every router is having their individual brains, you just have to log in a lot of devices to troubleshoot. But if this kind of the issue is going to happen in the SD WAN, you just having a single controllers available where you just go and after logging, 
all brains routing information is there you can take a decision why this kind of behavior is happening so you can easily understand where is the problem and how can i fix that so it is quite easy no need to go each and individual locations right and this is going to help you help you a lot right so this is how sd wan architecture is going to be deployed and everywhere we just having the different different devices so now we understand in the io modules we having the two devices is going to be deployed one is the vh another is the ch these are the nothing these are the routers right we called routers why ch why vh so vh is nothing this is the viptela router so history was viptela was one of the company viptela was company which is acquired by the cisco so once it was done the acquisition cisco still keep using the viptela name because might be they having some kind of agreement you just have to use my brand or might be intentionally cisco using so we don't have to understand that much of the business perspective but yes this viptela was one of the company later cisco acquired that after acquiring those company what is what was happen the cisco start using the brand that is the viptela and they manufacturing the routers which is known as the vh so that router whenever you see the vh they having a different different module i am going to model of the routers i am going to show you might be the 1000 of the vh 2000 of the vh 5000 of the vh or 100 vh so lot of modules available here means router model available here so this is the vh so the, this is nothing this is just a viptela routers which is designed by the viptela and manufactured by the cisco right similarly we having the ch so ch is the actual cisco product ch is actual cisco product that means a cisco router so what is those router so ch is just just like whatever the router you have see isr asr csr and many more we having a ct series of the router also the all router are manufactured by the cisco not viptela so these are the pure business of the cisco where they manufacture the different different routers right so these routers having the provisions these router also having the provision if you just upgrade the image if you just upgrade the image of the any of the router let's suppose you are running these routers and you want to make this router as a sd wan router right so what you have to do you just have to take the license from the cisco and you just have to upgrade the image so you just have to upgrade the image after upgrading the image this router will become the sd wan router so once we upgrade the image any of the isr asr or csr router with the upgrading of the is sd wan ios version these are known as the ch routers so cisco edge router we call as a cisco edge one is the viptela edge one is the cisco edge the work is going to be same every concept is going to be same only the way of the configuration is little bit going to be different so in our lab we having the both flavor available you can see here we having the ch available also that is cisco we integrated in the our lab i'll show you and probably you can see this has been live so if i am showing on in my previous batch so you will find that this ch is also live so something okay. i'll show you. Yeah. yes anything yeah. ramu you asking oh, anything so in a in a c router uh, uh, uh viptela support multi vendor or only cisco router required uh, in a c edge uh only cisco router is supported not multi vendor only okay. cisco router only uh, three four model of the router let me show you all the models what they support csr asr ct whatever i told these all and let me show you if any other model available so this is a cisco v managed dashboard and you can see that we have onboarded lot of devices one van is down which one is down Uh, okay vh5 is generatable for some reason no worry but you can see here in my lab i have the ch i have the vh i have the uh, h3 h4 h1 h2 every is live and up and working you can see the code version and this site are up and working only one device is down there's the vh5 it is not showing here but rest of that devices is which is up and working they all are up and working so ch also integrated vh is also integrated to see most of the site we having the vh 1 2 3 this is the vh 4 and this is the vh 5 so why this is down because it's stopped it's not started so once i start it is also going to be up and working so it it was somehow off so it was not saying so and also we having a ch 
so we having the both of the flavor we learn everything configuration point design point how it is going to happen and if you see what all basically devices are available for the ca and va so if you just want to check you just go there see these are the router asr these models of the router is supporting the sd wan c series of these routers are supporting the sd wan c series you can see here and finally if you see isr csr series which are uh, which i am using right now in the, my sd wan lab that is also supporting here after that we having the some isr series router also they are all supporting and the finally we having the vh100 vh100 b vh100 1000 vh1000 2500 vh cloud v manage and v smart so these all routers we keep using in the production environment if you having a different different uh, model of the router you can do the configuration and this is the only devices it is supported by the sd wan and these all belong to viptela or cisco no other vendor devices is supported because every vendor having their own devices and they support their protocols their configuration on their own devices only i hope it is clear to everyone right so the io modules coming to the again io module is nothing it's just they using two devices let me write here it could be the vh it could be the vh router or could be the ch router this is the like io module devices switch fabric this is not nothing isp connections it could be the internet any type of internet mpls or you might be the 4g circuits 4g lte circuits or 5g circuits whatever you having the wireless service anything is going to be supported and control plane is something we having a three devices available here that we know as the controllers the first one is known as the v manage okay the second one is known as the v smart and third one is the v bond which we have to understand okay so we having the control plane devices that we basically known as the v manage v smart and v bond we have in the edge routers ch so total we have to understand in entire sd wan session the five type of devices three is the control plane and rest is the routers two type of the routers so you can see in my lab also if you go there we having these three controllers that is a v manage v smart and v bond and rest are the like vh and these are the legacy router we are just acting as a transport this is the legacy switch these are the switches everything is switched you can see here so probably we just have to understand five type of devices entire of the sd wan session but these are not cup of tea and this not easy task okay we just have to invest a lot of time a lot of technology we have to deep dive have to understand the configuration from the scratch everything okay so moving forward you can see here also we having the root ca so why we use this root ca we'll discuss more about that it is this having the special purpose to just certification point of view we are using this root ca so we will understand in later stage how why this is going to be used okay anyone having any question till now yeah yes sir yes tell me lim in real time also we are using root certification this uh, real time uh, real time in real time scenario probably answer is no Uh, unless your organization want to root CA as an enterprise, enterprise root CA. Else, if you are not uh, using enterprise root CA, the answer is no. By default, you will get everything certification from the Cisco portal or JTB portal, PNP portal. So ninety nine percent, I can say answer is no. One percent customer, you will find where they are using the root CA. Okay, then where we are getting the certifications? Every uh, okay, so certification. How it is going to happen? What is the correct process and how it is going to be applied? We having to discuss in the upcoming days everything about the certifications. You can see in my upcoming section, I will explain about the certification. So if you talk about certification, so we just have to understand how certification is going to happen with the different different devices, right? When we install, right? So we having a lot lot of way to do the certification here. The zero trust fabric. We just have to understand when we discuss this particular module. In upcoming days, I will explain how the certification is going to happen. 
So if you are not using the root CA certification, we just having to various way to do the certification, right? The device itself, whatever you are purchasing, they having the device certificate or they having the inbuilt semantic root chain installed, which is going to be, you know, used to just validate your certificate from the Evnet root CA, right? So we will understand in the upcoming stage how this is going to happen for the different different scenario for the certification. So can we hold for some time if you don't mind? Alim? Okay, I got it, sir. Yeah. This, this yeah. is the, uh, okay. I got it. This point up. Uh -huh. Okay, but uh, in real time, how we will get uh, if we are not using this root CA, then where we will get the uh, certifications? So that's I'm telling. Uh, that's concept we will understand in the. Uh, VH is, router identity. Is this is the concept we just have under. Let me just give an idea, right? Uh, you'll get an answer, right? So whenever I design any of the boxes, I just wanted to not touch this topic today because I want to go in this sequence. So let's say suppose you buy any of the routers from the, any of the vendors, right? So what is going to happen? You you'll get one of the TPM chip is installed inside of the router, right? So that is TPM chip is physical VH router uniquely identify by the chassis ID and the certificates real number. So every device is having these two things very unique, chassis ID and certificates real number. And they having one of the certificate that is a temper proof module, right? We call TPM chip, right? So temper proof module is going to install here inside of this particular devices, right? So certificates, whatever certificate you have, they all are going to install in the TPM chip during the manufacturing process. So whatever the manufacturing is going to happen during that, they're going to install. After installing this TPM chip, what they are going to do, that certificate, basically what they install inside of the TPM chip that was signed by the Evnet root CA. So this is the, again, a root CA, which is managed by the, during the manufacturing. This is the enterprise root CA. The work is similar, but the only name is going to be changed trusted by the control plane element. This is a trusted by the control plane element. So whenever the router is going to make any kind of decision, you having a choice when, on which route CA you want to make this validation. So when you do the certification, this is a part of our agenda. I'll explain how it is going to happen. So once you do the certification, how you want to make the certification, so you having a two option. You want to do certification with the enterprise route CA or Symantec Cisco automated. You can see here, so if you choose this Cisco automated or Symantec, it will automatically do the verification. Just have to make the reachability with the root CA. It might be already available based on the PNP portal or your JTP server portal, and it will do backend by on. No need to do anything. It is going to happen automatically. They will just take the you know serial number, chassis number by default, what is available uh, in the device, and based on the serial and chassis number, they will check their repository when the device is onboarded from the vManage to vWand, and they will just validate and just make this certified, this is fine. But if you don't, if you want to skip these two things, if you're not having the valid license, valid things, contract, then you can use the enterprise root CA, which I'm using in my lab. <clears throat> and by using the enterprise root CA, I'm telling that, hey, every my, hey, every my control plane devices, if you want to do verification for the certificates identity, just this is your trusted root CA. Everyone have to agree whatever certificate he is issuing and the same certificate key chain should be installed by you. So we will understand. Hope a little bit you get an idea, uh, Alim, about this. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah. So this is how it is going to work. So I'll explain in later stage when we'll discuss about the step by step how the certificate identity is going to happen. Probably in the next class when we start configuring the lab, then we'll discuss these things in very detail. Okay. So any other question apart from this certification, guys? Because we have to discuss this. Anyone having anything and they want to clarify? <clears throat> okay. So moving forward, moving forward. Here we are using, excuse me. Here Sorry. We are using firewall also. Yeah, we can integrate the firewalls. We'll we'll use uh, one of the router as a firewall to check the different different services. We having a different different scenario, uh, advanced scenario like service insertion, where we just have to take as a firewall as a service, IDS as a service, IPS as a service, network as a service. Then we can integrate with the firewall. I'll tell this concept in the later later stage where uh, we'll discuss everything about the firewall features. Okay. Uh, okay. Scheduled uh, for weekend only. Sorry? 
this classes are scheduled for weekend only yes this classes these classes are only for weekend saturday sunday 10 to 12 30 clear all right so moving forward we understand little bit about the controller we little bit understand about the traffic flow we understand little bit about the architecture of the sd van right almost how the we using the decoupling process by the opening the one of the closed box in the open box now let's start doing some kind of deep dive in the further section if we talk about the sd van solution right so if i start using any of the ppt i have a lot of ppt cisco sd van solution they are di talking different different things so every one is talking kind of a similar kind of the concept so let me just to, 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 let me just go one by one okay so so you can see this is the one of the diagram right cisco sd van one of the you can see architecture overview in this architecture overview, as I explained, whenever we talk about the sd one solution, we having total five component, including the V-Bond, V-Smart, V-Manage, and C-H, right? And V-Smart and V-Edge also. So these total, we having the five component, and we just have to complete all our testing and learning based on these five component only, right? So one thing we understand whenever I talk about data plane or IO module, there is the device which is going to use as the router. It could be the VH and could be the CH. This is a clear to everyone, I hope, right? Whenever I talk about the transport, whenever I talk about the van circuit or transport, that is nothing your ISP connection. This is a second like component. The third component is a control plane devices. So control plane devices further classified in three way, right? What is the three way of the control plane devices? So the three way of the control plane devices is one of the plane, which is known as the management plane. One of the plane is known as the orchestration plane. One of the plane is known as the control plane. So your control plane also further classified in the three planes. One of the management plane, one of the control plane, one of the orchestration plane so let's understand and let's try to get more information what is the orchestration plane we'll do the deep type also but let's try to understand why you use the management plane why you use the control plane and the orchestration plane and data plane so if we talk about a data plane first so data plane is just nothing you just have to connect your branch office location data center switches and based on that switches you can connect the end devices end users or servers or printer or whatever the uh, wireless uh, controller ap so just think about it is a router on behind the router we having the lan switch and behind the lan switch we are connecting different different end devices could be the printer could be the ap could be the my server could be the my pc laptop anything could be connected so this is the my data plane devices where i'm actually connecting my end users end devices hope it is clear the switch fabric is just the transport which is just making the mediator between the controller and the data plane now what is the control plane and why further it is segregated in the three different plane right so if i talk about the control plane the first thing we having the control plane device it's a part of the controller but we known as a control plane device so why basically we use that so this is the known as the v smart this controller we call as a v smart and this v smart is a very powerful anything related to routing you want to achieve routing or anything about the policy right it is going to manage by the v smart so routing decision everything routing protocols routing decisions whatever you think that is completely going to manage by the v smart so v smart is just responsible to manage every routing information from the fabric perspective, sd one fabric perspective. Few more things I'm going to cover later on in the slides. What else? But just you think, routing, if you think, who is going to manage? That is the vSmart. And what the routing protocol we are going to use? 
only one single routing protocol we use that is OMP here. No BGP, no OSPF, no AIGRP in the SD-WAN fabric. We can configure in the LAN, but not in the SD-WAN fabric that we known as the overlay management protocol. So we call overlay management protocols. So this is the OMP routing protocol. And this routing protocol is a Cisco proprietary. Okay, no other vendor can use this routing protocol. So this is the high level things we smart adjust for the routing. Now we having the management plane that the device is going to act as a management plane that we know as the V manage. So V manage is like one of the device which is responsible to manage overall fabric. If I talk about the so Alim is asking uh, other vendors which protocol. So other vendor depend on the which vendor you are talking. Different different vendor having different. If you're using Versa as Divan, they use the BGP. If you're using the Velo, Velo Cloud, they're using the VCMP protocol. If you're using the Polo Alto, they again using the uh, protocol that is a BGP. So different different vendor having a different, different routing protocol. Cisco having the OMP. So we just have to learn about the OMP. Different vendor having different routing protocols. <clears throat> but you cannot run OMP in the any other vendors. This is Cisco proprietary routing protocol only. So <clears throat> management plane is something is the one of the single pan of the glass by sitting on that single pan of glass that is known as the V manage. See, this is the basically V manage dashboard. You can see a dashboard. You can see whatever in front of the dashboard. We call this is the V manage. So this tool at uh, this management plane device is very powerful. So if you want to do any configuration, any policy, any kind of troubleshooting, any kind of the audit logs. So you can do anything from here. And this is the only tool by sitting on this tool, you can configure your all branch sites. You can monitor your all branch sites. You can do any kind of the policy configuration. You can do any kind of template configuration. You can troubleshoot where is the issue, what is the issue. You can put the utilization report, talk up report, any error, any connection, everything you can put here. I'll show you in later stage. So this is the tool management plane. By sitting on this management plane tool, I can do whatever I want related to SD-WAN in terms of the configuration management and troubleshooting. So this is something management plane. Now the third tool we have orchestration plane. This is the very important that tool or that device known as the V bond, like a James bond. And trust me, this V bond is very powerful. So it is like gateway of the, we can say gateway of the SD-WAN fabric. What does mean gateway of the SD-WAN fabric? So is that mean that meaning of the gateway of the SDN fabric is that let's suppose you having an offer letter, any of the company, just I'm giving the example. You having the offer letter, any of the company, you want to join those company and reach you reach the office and you just go on the reception, right? So if you're going to the reception, one security person will be there and they might be called to the HR. Hey, one person is coming at reception and he wanted to discuss with you about the joining process because he having some kind of documents, but it's valid or not valid. He is not going to check. He is not having the authority to check, but he is going to call to HR person. Hey, HR, can you please come and just check whether this guy is valid for you or you want to just take inside organization or not. So HR is going to come and after coming to HR, they are just going to validate your document, your ID, your offer letter and your photographs and you, everything they are going to validate based on the offer letter, photograph, whatever they have. So if they are going to like validate the things, then what is going to happen after validating, if C find like everything is good. Right, then C will introduce to your line manager. C will introduce to your line manager. And after that, your line manager is going to uh, just introduce to different different or colleagues, right? How basically you can work, who is your colleague, who is your team lead, and where you get the information about the 
process the clients and everything so hr is the first point of content contact if anyone wanted to in the company see or he will going to validate you are the right person or not right person if you are the right person you having the right identity then see or he is going to allow to join the organization right so it's a single point of contact contact of, or you can say is the gateway of the organization by consulting her or him you can just only enter in the organization right similar thing we bond is going to play a role in the sd1 fabric let's say, suppose i told we having the v managed device we have in the v smart v bond v bond v edge and c edge so if any of the devices let us suppose you build a site in this way you just understand in this way let us suppose these my four sites are running 1 2 3 4 5 you just build this site new very new site right and this site this router want to join the sd1 fabric this site want to join the sd1 fabric means he want to talk with this site 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 and controller so before joining into the controller what he have to do so before joining into the controller he have to prove the identity i am the right person to join this fabric to whom he just have to reach out to v bond first and he have to present i have the right certificate i have the right chassis number i have the right serial number and if we want to find that you are the absolutely right then he is going to introduce about the v manage and v smart if he found that you are not right person then he is going to reject you you never going to join the fabric likewise the hr okay so just give me one second so that mean the orchestration plane we want plane is a very powerful tool to just onboarding any of the devices so if you want to onboard anyone it just have to prove your identity to the we want we want is going to verify your identity and if we want is going to be happy with your identity then only he is going to introduce to the we manage and we smart and then further they are going to give you information about the different different branches so you can start talking to the different different branches right so this is the we want so we want always known as orchestration plane and he is going to orchestrate you he is going to validate you he is going to check you and based on that it is going to be do further actions so if i go a little bit deeper size of this all sd wan controller uh, design or like uh, things so you will get a little bit more information let me see mm. okay this is a slide so you can see how the traditional wan was working so at uh, the same thing the management plane control plane data plane everything inside of the router so you having the thousand of router hundred of sites they all having the similar kind of the like uh, information right but once we go with the viptela secure extensible network overlay we having the way of the working is going to be changed right so this way of the working how it is going to be changed let's understand <clears throat> so in this architecture you can see i explain the orchestration plane management plane control plane data plane but if you go a little bit deeper side how the orchestration is going to work and what other function they are going to do so one thing i explain orchestration plane like wise is the first point of the authentication white listing model without consultation of the orchestration plane or the cisco we want you cannot join the any kind of the fabric of the sd wan what else it is going to perform it is going to perform like every details about distribute list of the v smart v managed so it is going to give you what all v smart is available what v is, is available what v managed is available to your fabric so every information you will get once you get validated or authenticated by the v smart it is also responsible to do nat uh, traversal process if you having any nat scenario in your net uh, requirement in the sd1 fabric so all nat information nat table is going to store in the v bond itself so he will just going to give the nat information right and right it's again the public and private ip mapping it is going to just keep everything behind the nat or the uh, any of the site which is going to from the private to public that is going to store in the v bond 
it is a highly resilient that means you can use the two v bound so if one is going to down another will just take a role and it keeps serving your organization so these all key features you just have to take care about the orchestration plane if i moving to the little bit down about the management plane so as i mentioned that management sir, plane ha ji yes tell me yes um, go up slide yeah yeah tell me keep the second name uh, second last is for request public ip address look good set behind one to one net that means static net or uh, i uh, they, they 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 having a three type of nat symmetric nat uh, they having okay, a yeah, symmetric, nat right yeah yeah so they not like a static dynamic nat they are not they having a completely different nat so i'll tell you about the nat uh, okay 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 no issue. okay okay, yeah. okay so sir, later okay, I'll, I'll, I'll okay later i'll tell okay, you okay i understand how it yeah so similarly if you talk about the management plane this management plane is just i mentioned that zero day operation zero day Zero one uh, means day zero, day one, day two operations. What does it mean? So whenever you start building your SUN fabric, this is the first tool or first device you have just to onboard. Without onboarding this vManage, you cannot start the SUN fabric deployment. So in our lab also, when we just start doing this lab configuration, the first thing we have to onboard that is a vManage, right? Without vManage, we cannot go with the, any other devices, any other controllers, any other like. Uh, sites to just bring them up and working so we just have to start with the vmanage first so that's why they are talking about if you want to do the zero day operation or day two day two three operation you just have to start with the vmanage that we call as a single pan of glass right single pan of glass that means you can do whatever you want to do related to the sd1 configuration troubleshooting management reporting logging everything you will get from there right multi tenant right with the web scale so what that means so this we manage could be dedicated to one customer or might be we can dedicate like likewise the vrf you just think about the vrf like one routing router having the one global routing table right global routing table so if you use the global routing table that means the it's a single tenant like dedicated everything to the one customer but i want to split the routing table with the help of the vrf that means the routing has been shared with the two customer but by default one routing table cannot reach to the another routing table they are completely isolated to one to another similar is like if you want to split this we manage and you want to allocate to the customer a and the customer v it is possible and that mode is known as a multi tenant so you can allocate delegate the resources to the different different customer for the their operations it is also possible right so this is about the multi tenant <laughs> centralized provisioning so and policy and template so if you think about anything you want to do the configuration so provisioning it is available by sitting here you can do the configuration certification so you can set device template policy so everything you can do by sitting on the vmanage so no need to even routing security cloud feature whatever you want to do you can do by the sitting in the we manage now troubleshooting and monitoring software upgrade process gui with the roll back access these all thing is also possible with the we manage as i mentioned that if you want to integrate with a third party like tools for the rest api or netconf application programmable interface api is equal to application programmable interface so you want to integrate the apis to just get the interact with the one platform to another platform this is also possible with the help of the we manage you can integrate them and they also support the highly resilient features like they support the highly resiliency <clears throat> so it is also possible so if you want to deploy to we manage and you want to make one is the primary one is the secondary this is also possible you can do that there is no problem what else so the last control plane device we have that both, we known as both the, we both we manage should be uh, in same place or in other uh, location it could be the same place it could be another location could be in cluster so, so most recommended uh, it should be the other place not in same place okay so how the both are connected they just have to make the reachability between to each other and then we can make the cluster and the by making the clusters uh, they just 
likewise you think about if you want to make that one Palo Alto sitting in the one location and you want to make the HA with this one Palo Alto sitting in the firewall in the another data center. So by using the routing feature, we can make the HA. There is a possibility, right? Similar, if you want to make the a, like a cluster of two, we manage by sitting in the one location, you can just directly connect with the, they having the backlink uh, connection by using the bus cables and all, we can do that. But if you want to integrate with the remote location, we just have to make sure they are the reachable. So if you want to make the cluster, let me just show you, we having the cluster management here. So here, if you want to make the vManage, that should be the IP should be reachable. Whatever the IP of the vManage you are just putting and the username and passwords. Once this IP is reachable, this vManage is going to talk to them and they will add in the cluster and you just have to complete the cluster settings. Like everything for the residency point of view. And then, then it is going to work. So similarly, you just think about the one of the device which could be the liquidated in another region, one is another region. So it is similar like the data centers you can see. One set of the devices for the data center we make in a, might be in the uh, Frankfurt data center. So if it is going to down for any region, might be you having the another data center which might be in the uh, London data center. So if anything goes wrong, the failover services is going to happen automatically because they having the same set of the resource, same set of the devices. So this is one way we can do. So what is going to happen might be your VS devices, whatever the VS devices we have, they are one V manages here. Sorry, not V manage, not V H. It's the V manages here. And we having the another V manages here. So what they are going to do, they are going to form the control connection with these two devices at the same time, right? control connection, but the primary would be this. If this is skip serving you, so the control connection will be up and working for you. But in any case, this controller is goes down. So this control connection will be lost to you. So this will come in active state and it starts serving to you. And in that time, they are serving as a cluster. Does this make sense? Yeah, got it. Yeah. So <sighs> moving forward. So the next device we have, that is the control plane. So the control plane device, when we talk about the control plane device, this control plane device is just about the, you know, facilitate fabric discovery. So that is about the routings, right? Dissimulate the control plane information between the age, right? So whatever the routing information, you want to discover the fabric through the routing, because everyone, when the come to the fabric and they authenticate them, the first thing they share with the V smart, that is their routing information. What I know, I just want to advertise to the V smart and then V smart is going to tell you what they have information. So that is going to share to you. So they are going to dissimulate information to you, you as well. So the fabric is discovered. They will share the information about the my routing information. And at the same time, V smart is going to share their on routing information to you as well. So the both way the communication is going to establish, which is called as the OMP. So that would let me show you for time being. So if I'm going to open any of the router and if I'm running the command, just for the CLI point of view, so, so OMP peer. So you can see this is the router. VS3 is forming the OMP routing table with the vSmart and they are receiving the 24 routing route, installing the 24 routes and they are sending the 16 route. So the route sent, route installed and route received. So 24 route they are receiving from the different different branches and they all are installed. They are valid route and at the same time they are advertising 16 route. So this is showing about one control connections or might the OMP session, which is going to the vSmart. But this vSmart having the multiple OMP session because every site is connected to him and they are receiving the every site routing information. We'll do the deeper side understanding later stage. No need to worry, but I'm just showing you to just understand here. So MP peers. So if you run, see now every router is just showing the routing information. So whatever the peers we have, some are 16, some are 24, but none of the route is installing in here. Why? Because this vSmart is just like uh, catch and pass. Whatever the information they are receiving, they are passing to other. They are not installing because they don't have to take the routing decision from the vSmart. 
the vsmart will pass the routing information and router will take the routing decision based on the my instructions right this is the routing you have so you can see side 3 4 6 and 200 and all the states are up up time is you can see 1 hour 14 minute and the other vh types and different different peer ip that is system ip we'll discuss more over layer id also we have what that mean okay so <sighs> let me just go there so going forward like facilitate discovery uh, fabric discovery dissimulate the control plane information distribute data plane and the app over routing policy to the vh so everything about the data plane information and application over routing information that all is going to be like distributed by the v smart and based on the v smart distribution you basically get like or share the all routing information to the every devices <clears throat> whatever you having right just give me one second so the next thing is implement the control plane policies <clears throat> such as the service chaining so the, you guys are asking that the what is the service chaining where we need the firewall so this service chaining is like very key component to just maintain the additional security in the sd wan fabric if you want to integrate the service chaining is going to help and for that we just have to integrate the palo alto firewall or any asa firewall or any other third party firewall if you really want <clears throat> so that is also possible in addition of that in addition of that what else so if you want to reduce the uh, like control plane complexity so every router will just i said right if if i use the like 1000 router so 1000 router will share the 1000 routing information and every router will control that routing information in their brain or they just have to check but if you use the v smart it is just single plane where every routing will be available and that is going to distribute to different different routers so you just have to go and check the routing information in the single device so it is going to reduce the control pin complexity in terms of the troubleshooting and like checking how the routing behavior is going to happen and similar they are going to just highly resilience right so highly resilience means if you are just building two v smart likewise here and if you are just trying to run so control connections so control connections here so you can see this devices are building that different different uh like we manage if you having a two v manage they are just going to build the different different like uh, uh dtls and tls connection with the different v manage but right now we just having the single v manage they are just building with the one vpls connection now we can see the v smart having a two connection but they are the same only difference is they are building the connection with the two different transport we'll understand what that mean since there is a v bond they are the same you can see but they are building with the three different transport you can see bj internet public internet and the mpls that's why they having a three connection so even we having the same controller but we having the multiple transport they are just going to be used with the all transport control connection but we manage what's happen even they having a three transport or two transport we manage always build a connection with the any single transport once the connection is built they are not going to uh change or show the all the connection unless or until the first build connection is going to be down so if i make the public connection down it will automatically switch to the mpls without any tension and once it will the mpls the public internet will be up it will never switch to public internet it will keep stay in the mpls only so this is how we manage is doing the behavior while the building the control connections we'll discuss how the control connection is going to build what is a tls what is a dtls and how the configuration is going to happen in the later stage so these all feature about the control plane devices this could be the highly resilience also now the last but not least about the data plane devices which we discussed earlier so in this data plane devices <clears throat> we having that van as router could be the vh uh, arjun uh, sumit you asking something yes yeah, sir when the isp and there is a some fiber break or any connectivity issue so that's very time between controllers and vh device there is a bfd session goes down or omp session goes down first you have to understand bfd session control plane session or like control session i can write 
और ओ एम पी सेशन एंड आई पी सेक्स सेशन सो नाउ योर क्वेश्चन इज वेन एनी आई एस पी गोज डाउन राइट आई एस पी गोज डाउन राइट या एनी प्रॉब्लम इन फ्रॉम आई एस पी एंड लाइक समटाइम्स फाइबर ब्रेक और एनी कनेक्टिविटी इशू फ्रॉम द ओके सर्विस प्रोवाइडर सो दैट्स वेरी टाइम सो नाउ वी हैविंग अ टू कनेक्शन फ्रॉम द वी एज वन इज द वी एज टू कंट्रोलर कंट्रोलर्स एंड वन वी एज टू वी एज दिस टू कनेक्शंस राइट सो व्हिच वन इज डाउन टेल मी व्हिच सिनेरियो यू आर टॉकिंग sir i am just asking that uh, if there is a problem from service provider so we i can... i understand i understand your question so now see this is a topology so this is this is the service provider right yes sir one service provider yes, is here connecting to the vs to vs and the same service provider is connecting to the vs to the controller right Other so side. if if this link goes down so my i lost the control connections you can see you can see makes sense if these two links goes down i lost the control connection if this linkage up this linkage up and this goes down this goes down and might be uh, this goes down so i lost the vs3 connections so this two different things so which one you are referring because we we just have to understand the scenario your question is completely valid but which one you are referring which scenario i just wanted to uh, make sure or you are not Can yeah, we yeah. explain both both this scenario? Ha, yeah. So that's I wanted to. Ah, uh, Sumit, let me just explain. See, so <clears throat> your question is valid, but we just have to think in this way. See, whenever you talk about the BFD session, right, and IP sec session, and control session, or MP session, we just have to understand where we make the BFD session. So BFD session always run between the edge devices. if you having the edge devices means router to router we run the vfd right we run the ipsec we discuss more so if your isp link goes down between the edge devices then your vfd is going to be down or your ipsec is going to down is it clear so this is the one scenario if we having the controller that is a v smart if we having a controller that is a v manage if we having a controller that is a v bond so there is a three tunnels is going to form between the vh with the isp so it could be a single isp it could be the multiple isp just think about these all controller reachable with the single isp so if this isp might goes down this is the one isp which is just provided in the fabric might be this isp is verizon if this isp is goes down then what all going to down So if I talk about the V Smart, V Smart will make down its control connection. The first thing, control connection, and the same time it's going to down OMP sessions because OMP session always run between the V Smart to VH. But for V Manage only, they lost the control connection. He lost the control connection. So the control connection run between the controller and VH. But V Smart run the OMP session also, so OMP session is going to down with the V Smart. Control session is going to be down with the V Manage and the V Bond, and the BFD and the IP stack is going to down if this connection is going to lost between the VH devices. Sir, Clear? It seems, it seems then if there is a connectivity issue between H to H device, so that's why time BFD session goes down. Yes, you uh, lost the data connection problem. Data connection problem you get here. But here, hand, if you brain down, you get yeah. the control connection problem. So you just have to understand where we have done. I'll cover this thing in very detail, but I just wanted to convey this message. Clear, sir. And if there is a issue between controllers between, so that's the time OMP session goes down. No, 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 no. Again, let me just write here. So you understand V H to V Smart OMP and control. Is clear? V H to V Manage only the T L S and D T L S. TLS and uh, DTLS and TLS control connection. This could be the TLS and DTLS. This is only for DTLS, not TLS. This could be the TLS and DTLS. DTLS or uh, said TLS. These are control connections. We'll discuss more. So just think about if V Smart 
ISP to VS down, OMP will also down along with the control connection. But this goes down between the uh, V minus to VS, only your control is going down. Only the control, because there is no OMP running between the VS and VS, V minus. There is no OMP running between the V uh, edge to the V bond. There is no OMP running between the VS devices. You got it first, but let's understand in this way. Again, you're having a two control of the V smart. So they are again running the OMP and control connections. If you're having the, again the V manage, they are they again running their connection. So they again lost the control. They again lost the control. This will lose the control plus your uh, what I can say <sighs> OMP session also. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Is it clear? We'll discuss more how this architecture, how this behavior. Let me show you a little bit. So this is really a nice question. So let me just show you a little bit how it is. Mm, probably will get somewhere. I'll leave it because I just wanted to complete the data plane first. <clears throat> mm? Oh, yeah. Okay, so let me just go a little bit down. <laughs> so see, you can see here, you are running the OMP between the V smart to the V edge and between the VH. So we can see the OMP session is running. Here we are running the, this connection is the IPsec green color and this is the BFD session inside of this IPsec. DTLS is this one. So OMP DTLS is just running inside between the VH. We'll discuss a little bit more, not only the upper, upper, we'll discuss everything in detail in upcoming section, right? And you can see here, <clears throat> Here, if you talk about that, see, so these are the, if controller is just running in the V smart and V smart, they all are running the OMP in between. So MP is going to use between the smart to smart as well and a smart to VH as well. So we'll understand, no need to worry. Any other question about that? No, so I was talking, uh, yeah. Any, anyone saying something? Okay, so we we were talking about the data plane. So this is going to be van edge routers, could be the VH, could be the CH. It provides the secure data plane with the remote edge router. How secure data plane? By using the IP stick. So every edge to edge connection is going to build via the IP stick. Under the IP stick, your all data communication is going to be happen. So actual data is going to be communicated with the help of the IPsec and one device is going to talk with the another device, right? OMP session is going to be established between the edge device to the VS smart, that is OMP. How? With the help of the control connections. The first thing is going to establish the control connections. And after establishing the control connections, inside of the control connection, your OMP session is going to be established. So you can see here, first, TLS and DTLS is going to be established and inside of the TLS DTLS OMP session is going to happen. First BFD session is going to build inside of the BFD session, the your, uh, sorry, first the IP session is going to build and inside of the IP sec, your BFD session is going to be run. So if anyone asks you inside of the OMP, we run the TLS and DTLS or inside of TLS DTLS, we are running the OMP. So you should be able to answer inside the TLS and DTLS, we running the OMP. Inside BFD, we are running the IPsec or inside IPsec, we are running the BFD. So the answer is inside IPsec, we are running the BFD. First IPsec is going to build and then BFD is going to build. First TLS, DTLS tunnel is going to build and then you just have to OMP neck to activate it. TLS is based on the TCP. Uh, sorry, TLS is based on the uh, UDP. TLS is based on the TCP. You just have to not. We'll discuss. I'll explain how it is going to configure in next class. So this you have to take care in mind. So this is the same thing. 
and also they are talking about implement the data plane and the application of routing policies export performance aesthetics anything related to your performance you want to export it is completely possible you can get it from the router by using the vmanage so every detail you will get there you can integrate or run the traditional routing protocols likewise osp or bgp agrp and vrrp right so if you want to just connect the routing protocols in the lan infrastructures like why is the bgp connected to osp and static it is absolutely possible if you having the further l3 switch and you want to run the osp of bgp static and connected between the vh to the s device like another devices traditional uh, lan devices it is absolutely possible you can do that there is no problem right so this is also fine now moving to the next after that what it support the zero touch deployment so what is the zero zero touch deployment so i explained yesterday class if you having a two scenario one is the legacy router and you want to do the replacement if it goes faulty and one router is the vh router and you want to do the replacement then zero touch will give you the like freedom you just have to connect the power cable and lan wan cable and that router will come on the service and come on line and based on that you can start operation of your site how it is going to happen zero touch provisioning we'll discuss little bit more not little bit we'll discuss in depth in upcoming session how the digital provisioning is going to happen what the all the steps is going to be required what prerequisite how the template could be created on the you know our we manage which can be attached to the you know any of the site which is going to be onboarded through the zero touch provisioning so this all things we'll discuss later in stage now the physical and virtual factor from the 100 mps 1 gbps and 10 G, uh, gbps circuits can be you know integrated with this vh router different different model and different different of the sap or circuit type whatever we have so this is all about the data plane devices and the control plane devices now you guys can ask anything if you having because we have done a lot of theoretical discussion today so i don't want to do further theoretical discussion for time being but we can have discussion general things if you having anything question let it do as given for anything what you not understand what you understand and you want to ask us some additional questions so your time to start now and you guys can ask anything all good so, and everyone under cs yes? so one question uh, like yeah. does mtu play any role uh, of speed uh, like on one interface of hd1 why am yeah this, uh... yeah definitely uh, mtu play a very vital role while configuring the circuit of the any of the transport like what you can see so run vpn 0 <clears throat> so if i am going on the interface and if i am going to just refer this interface under the vpn 0 so what is happening why mtu is like uh, ip mtu uh, sorry uh, tunnel interface uh, mp mtu what was the command uh, let me just mtu yeah yeah this is the mtu not ip mtu so any mtu you can just six like uh, four four zero if you want to say it, it is going to take so mtu is like we need to adjust and we just have to make mtu always lower than 1500 of the any of the circuit so by default any circuit negotiate the maximum transmission unit is like 1500 right so what is happen in case if you are not setting the mtu or not lowering down the mtu so what is going to happen the ip packet or the whatever the sd man fabric packet is going to be switch they just add some overhead so the ip packet whatever i receive might be this is my ip packet already they having a side of the 1500 bytes but they just add some kind of payload or overhead 4 bytes so now it's become the 504 bytes of the packet size so if your router interface having a maximum mtu maximum transmission unit is the 1500 so it cannot process with the 1504 so what you have to do they just have to fragment the packet so fragment means the packet has to be split in the two sides of the packet one might be the 1000 another could be the 500 any algorithm they can use and that split the packet so if you lowering down the mtu 
if you lowering down the mtu so that is going to give you your ip packet size will remain the less than the 1500 and if it is a like 40 50 and if you adding any kind of the load also 4 byte or 10 bytes it's not going to extend more than the 1500 so that means your fragmentation is not going to be happen so fragmentation sometime create a problem many of the application who uh, receive the fragmented packet they not support and they not correctly respond so they like support like start doing some kind of the slowness some kind of the like different different issues might be the page is not responding so better you just lower down the mtu so try to make the lower down mc like by the 41492 that is a standard or 1450 or 1496 this kind of the standard we can use sir, so it could be the lan interface or wan interface anywhere it could be sir my question is bit bit extended actually Uh, mm-hmm. like uh, i have a, uh, we have our uh, like uh, our data center in geneva okay mm-hmm. from uh, pakistan suppose we are to ping that okay mm-hmm. on one side i am giving payload size as 1410 or 1420 and mm-hmm. there is a packet drop of 10% around okay mm mm-hmm. but when i am giving without any uh, pay- payload size then it is 100% successful no drops ah then so you are trying to understand why this packet loss is happening right yes sir okay that's a very interesting thing <laughs> yesterday i have taken one of the class right uh, just i am sharing this observation to you yesterday just i taken one of the class that's regarding the ping and trace and i explain the same thing what you are asking okay so mm-hmm. let me just little bit give an idea so you can say this was the class i have taken yesterday live it was a live class so i would recommend everyone just watch this if you don't know how ping and trace work right so it is give the very detail i never seen any video which is one and half hour around for the ping on trace but i made it okay for my people so just watch this video meanwhile i am answering your query why it is happening and how you can solve it right so first thing you tell me you pinging from where uh, you pinging from router or the vh or any machine where you are pinging uh, from we manage sir uh, through router only router only right you are pinging from router only so see by default we manage huh? on we we manage. Ma- we manage yes so we manage your ping okay so it is also so what is happening whenever you do the any ping from the any cisco devices by default it's take the packet size is 100 bytes this is a default behavior 100 bytes if you uh, let me just try to check in the we manage what it is going to take so if i try to ping so let me just it is having the router having by default 100 but it is also size ping let us suppose 1.1.1 size if i am not going to use size it should be take 100 byte but here i can use 1400 and it's not pinging for some reason because this is not valid ip address Just, just let me just ping without size. What is happening? See, so it is taking eighty-four bytes here, fifty-six byte size. You can see. I have taken the fourteen hundred byte. If I am not saying anything, it is taking fifty-six hundred byte. Uh, sorry, fifty-six byte only packet. So your size is quite low. You understand? Yes, your sir. payload size is quite low. Just fifty-six byte. If you are not sizing anything. but if you size anything like if you just sizing like 100 then see it is become the 100 you can see 100 bytes so mm-hmm. if you increasing the size might be some hoop some device in between which is supporting not more than 1300 or might be the 1350 and that's why they are observing the packet loss or might be the link between the we manage to the your isp is not taking load not taking correct load so you just probably have to word with isp hey isp if i am sending my packet this is a real or this is a like dummy network lab network uh then i must you need to yeah. ask isp right sir so uh, pramit it is a real network or dummy lab network real real network sir real network okay so you just have to take 
to uh, with ISP. Hey, ISP, I'm just pinging with the 56 byte packet that is default. It is not having a problem. But when I'm increasing the load, your circuit is not handling the load and it is giving the drop. Can you check the circuit status? That's so you can ideal loads are we should give to test. That should be around 1400. Okay. This is the idle load 1400, 1350, 1450, not more than that. Just I recommend 1400 is ideal load, best load to test okay. anything. Yeah, not more than that because the overhead overload packet is like a uh, hundred byte is like quite very big. So I cannot say like 1400 is going to support. Okay. But you just have to understand how much size is going to default take. So always default size is quite low. If you check the same thing with the router, it is a hundred. Uh, let me show you because I just covered yesterday in the CCNP. Uh, pinging anything. Let me just show you. So here it is not showing any size, right? Default. But when you do for the extended ping, so if I go ping and I just put the target IP 1.1.1, repeat count anything datagram see this is size by default 100 size is taking so router and switch by default take 100 and the v edge v is smart let me check with the v manage also how much it is taking let me check v manage also hmm it is giving the error So if I am going the ping 1.1.1, one dot one dot one, oh, ping 1.1.1, one dot one dot one. say it is again 56 byte only. Somehow it is giving the error, no need to worry. So it is just 56 byte only. So every device is 56 byte. V is also, let me just check it. <clears throat> yeah, v is already checked. Uh, let me check one more time. So it is also 56 byte. So everything, if you think about that, the V edge, or we manage we smart the 56 byte router is the 100 byte any other question guys anything anyone having their mind because i believe today we are done a lot of theoretical discussion we have done so, we start doing uh, configuration from the next week yeah so how can we perform load balancing between the edge devices between the edge devices yeah uh, so you are talking about I have two edge devices and you want to perform the load balancing, right? Sir, because from edge device to between ISP and oh between the ISPS. So you just start talking about these two links, and I want to send some packet from this link and some packet from this link, right? At the same time, right? Yeah, sir. To some yeah. because sometimes we perform the load balancing like we are receiving mm -hmm. the from gig zero three and we are sending the packet from other link. Okay, good question. So first thing, if you are uh, not doing any kind of the load balancing mechanism, not configuring load balancing, then what is going to happen? By default, load balancing will be enabled. Which load balancing we called ECMP, equal cost multiple path. This is the SD-WAN feature it is going to give you the equal load balancing, right? So I'll give you the example. Let's suppose this VS3 want to reach this destination, right? So how many paths available for me to make this happen? So I have two paths. I can reach to this system this way. I can reach to this system this way. So can I check how which path is this taking right now from the VS3 point of view, say? So what we can do, we can go in the simulator and we can check either whether it's doing the load balancing or not. So I can go in the main dashboard. After going in the main dashboard, I'll go in the VS3. And after going in the VS3, I will go in the real time and I will go in the troubleshooting, okay? After troubleshooting, we can go with the simulate flow, how my packet is going to happen. So now see, my, I want to go in the 15 destination with the service VPN 10. So you don't know what is service VPN 10. So just forget for timing, but let's see how it is going to happen. So if I'm going to simulate the flow, you'll find that the packet is going via both of the circuit. See the public internet and the MPLS. So this is the MPLS circuit, and this is the MPLS circuit, and this is public internet. 
So right now the packet is going via the both of the circuit because they are doing the ECMP. We don't have configured anything to just manipulate the path. So by default, they are doing the ECMP. So they are doing the equal load balancing. Equal load balancing by help of the ECMP. But if you want to do the preference, MPLS would be the preference for the my such traffic. Internet should be preferred for the such traffic. You can do that also, right? It is absolutely possible. There is no problem. We'll see how it is going to happen in the AAR application aware routing, and we'll try to manipulate the path also. And not only the AR, based on the OMP preference, based on the route preference, also we do the lot of manipulations in the upcoming sections. Okay, Sumit. Thank you, sir. All right. So I believe we can wrap up today's session for time being, and we'll connect next week again with the more like configuration part. We'll try to start the configuration. What we'll do in from next class. Next class definitely is going to happen not less than the uh, two and a half hour. Just note my word. It is completely two and a half hour session is going to happen. And in this next class, we will do the interesting thing about the controller configuration. We will start from zero. So what is going to happen? Let me just do that. I will create a new lab for you all. This lab is fully configured. I leave, leave it as it is. I'm not going to touch. We'll start a very new lab with the same topology. There could be no configuration. So let me show you how it is going to happen. And based on that, we will start doing our learning. So if I go there. I can start, I can might be the clone this lab. After cloning this lab, I can put the name. Uh, Fab 2023 SD-WAN batch. So this is my new lab. So if I talk about this new lab, there is no configuration. I also clone, but only topology is clone. If I open any of the router, you'll find no configuration is there. So all configuration has been gone. So we just have to start configuring from the zero, right? So if I open this router. Sir, if we save the configuration and then we win, then we clone the lab. So it will show you. No, no, if you, if you clone the lab, it is just going to remove all the configuration. Okay, got it, sir. Yeah, even you save that, it is not going to take out the all certificate and configuration. Else, it is very easy for me to just rebuild the you know labs. So let me show you. So this is the VH3 now, and in this it's the initialization stage, which will take few minute time. So just wait. Once initialization is going to complete, then probably we'll good to start. Okay, so now system is ready. So if I'm using the password, username and password. So username is admin, password is admin. And it is asking change the password, re-enter password. So the once I do it, there is no configuration. Every configuration has been lost. So we just have to start from zero. So this device doesn't having any configuration. Everything VS3, even the name is not also not showing here the VS3. So we just have to do the configuration even the switch router ISP. So we will do the configuration, this lab from zero and will become the hero of the SD-WAN, okay? So no need to worry. So I wish you all the best for everyone and happy Sunday to everyone. And uh, it was a fantastic morning for me while working with you all and hope you, you all enjoy it together in the upcoming days, okay? Bye-bye, take care guys.